Welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. 205 days less the Russian invasion of Ukraine. More information has been released about the mass grave in the Kharkiv region. According to the head of National Police of Ukraine, Igor Klimenko, the bodies of about 50 dead civilians were found in the occupied territory of Kharkiv region. A gravesite of approximately 445 graves was found near Izum, reports Interfax Ukraine. Klimenko clarified that these bodies have been buried since March. It is necessary to exhume and identify each body. According to him, the process has already begun. CNN informed, based on its own sources, that the United Nations will soon send a mission of the UN Human Rights Monitoring Agency to the deoccupied Izum. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky said that among buried are people with signs of torture, children, those killed as a result of missile attacks, warriors of the armed forces of Ukraine. He stressed that the retribution will be dreadful. Previously, the media reported that some of the bodies found in graves had their arms tied. Verkhovna Rada Commissioner for Human Rights Dmitro Lubinets assessed that more than 1,000 citizens of Ukraine were tortured and killed in the residential areas of Kharkiv region that have been recently liberated from the Russian occupation. In his evening video address, President Zelensky said that Ukrainian forces found torture chambers where civilians of occupied cities were abused, premises where people were kept. He added that among those detained and tortured were not only Ukrainians, in particular seven citizens of Sri Lanka, students of the Kupiansk Medical College. Back in March, they were captured by Russian soldiers and subsequently kept in the basement. Only now, after the liberation of the Kharkiv region, these people were saved and received proper medical care. Regarding the graves that were found, the president said that there is already clear evidence of torture, humiliating treatment of people. Moreover, there is evidence that Russian soldiers, whose positions were not far from the place, shot at the bird just for fun. Quote, the world must react to all this. Russia has repeated in Izum what it did in Bucha, and now we have just begun to learn the full truth about what was happening in the Kharkiv region at that time. Unquote. In an interview with Reuters, Volodymyr Zelensky said that he does not believe that it is now possible to talk about a quick end of the war in Ukraine, despite the counteroffensive of the Ukrainian forces, reports Ukrainska Pravda. At the same time, the president believes that the supply of foreign weapons to Ukraine would be reduced if Kyiv had not launched a counteroffensive and that the territorial acquisitions would impress other countries. He also repeated his call to partner countries to intensify the supply of weapons to Ukraine. In particular, Ukraine would like to see more help from Turkey, South Korea, Arab and Asian countries. Zelensky also talked about certain mental barriers in Germany due to its Nazi past that do not allow it to transfer weapons to Ukraine easily, even though it is vital to help Ukraine to protect itself from Russian fascism. Russian President Vladimir Putin took part in the meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, reports Ukrainska Pravda. Putin said that the main goal of the war against Ukraine is, and has always been, liberation of Donbas. Back in February, Russia declared its goal to be the liberation of Donbas and what they called the Nazification and demilitarization of Ukraine, which basically meant bringing to power in Ukraine a pro-Russian government. Putin said that he would do everything to end the war as soon as possible, but Ukraine refuses to talk and wants to win by military means. The General Staff of Ukraine informs that the enemy tries to disrupt the actions of the Ukrainian troops, reports Unyan. The Russian forces shell Ukrainian positions along the contact line, conduct measures to regroup and bring in reserves. The Russian media reported about the death of two collaborators in the occupied city of Berdyansk, Zaporizhia region, reports Militarny. Deputy head of the Occupation Administration for Housing and Public Utilities Oleg Boyko and his wife Lyudmila Boyko, who headed the local Territorial Elections Commission preparing the illegal pro-Russian referendum, were killed. Their bodies were found near the garage. <laughs> Prime Minister of Ukraine Denis Shmigal informs that Ukraine is 80% ready for the upcoming heating season, reports Suspilne. According to him, a significant amount of coal has been accumulated and pumping of gas to the storage facilities continues. An operational headquarters has been formed for quick response to any possible crisis. First of all, the issue of cleaning up the aftermath of Russia's attack on Ukraine's critical infrastructure. 
The International Finance Corporation, part of the World Bank Group, plans to allocate 1 billion US dollars to Ukraine, reports FinClub. In November, this offer will be put for approval of the board of directors. The package will include direct lending, financial guarantees and trade finance instruments. We would really appreciate if you could support us on our Patreon. Even $5 a month will help us to continue our work and present to you the latest news from Ukraine. As a token of our gratitude for your support, you will get access to a series of exclusive episodes on wartime life in Ukraine. From this series, you will learn how ordinary Ukrainians live in times of invasion, what they eat, how they travel, celebrate, what music they listen to, and much more. To subscribe to our Patreon, follow the link in the description to this episode. Thank you! We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.